This is how things are looking after this game. Obviously, this one under interim England manager Lee Carsley once again. England coming into its second in Group B2. And let's welcome in Gab Marcotti as well, because there's more to talk about here with this game, especially some of the positions that we saw. But Gab, overall view in this match after what happens against Greece, they simply had to win this one. Yeah, look, I mean, I know it's, it's the Nations League, people look at it funny, but the fact is, you know, England were relegated and, uh, uh, under Gareth Southgate and were they to slip up again, then you go down a level, which means you play worse opponents, um, even worse than the ones that they're, that they're playing now, which means it's harder to mold a team to, to develop um, for the World Cups and, and the Euros, and, and that's why the Nations League exists. I think a lot of the negativity... Um, after the, the the Greece defeat, more than understandable, and 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 the unusual lineup that that Carsley played, I don't have a problem with it. If you want to try something, try a different solution. You don't get that many opportunities, but it was important then to you know steady the ship straight away with another victory, which I think you know keeps them in running for promotion. And I think that's important for the FA. May not be important for the for for some of us in the screaming media, but it's important to them. We talked about balance in that game against Greece. We're just going to take a look at the starting 11 for this game today against Finland. Trent Alexander-Arnold was the surprise at left back. Mm. What did you make of it? Well, to be honest, I think the fact that they've got so many injuries in that position that a player of his quality shouldn't have a problem going from one side of the park to the other, quite frankly, against a team that, that clearly they should be, even though it's away from home. So... I have no problem with it. Um, he was always going to try and get forward. You know, on on paper, they shouldn't have had to do as much defending. And so it, it made sense for him to, to make that move, bringing Walker in uh, and putting Trent Alexander on the left. I had, I had no problem with it. Uh, this looking a lot more uh, balanced, shall we say, than what we did see. But as you mentioned, we did show that chance from Cole Palmer. Mm. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about Cole Palmer and he just won. England's best player of the year, as voted for by the fans. On today's performance, what did you make of him? I still think that he's trying to figure out where he fits in, and England, as a coaching staff, they're trying to figure out where he fits in. Now, it was very clear to see that there was a contrast in the way that England plays when they get more direct, when there is a threat of running in behind. And... Madueke is not a better player than Cole Palmer. But the first time that Madueke grabbed the ball, he's going after somebody. He's running in behind. And it gets to the point where he puts the ball across and Radeski gets a touch on it. If not, it would have been Oli Watkins tapping the ball in. On the other side, for the third goal, Oli Watkins is running at somebody, is running in behind. So you're, you're testing teams into areas that they don't want to defend. And you're taking defenders into areas that they don't want to defend because they feel uncomfortable. That wasn't happening from Cole Palmer, but it wasn't happening from Jack Grealish either. It wasn't happening from Harry Kane either. Jack Grealish, the one time that he ran in behind, is his goal. Then you run out of space. And so you don't have time to run at people, to go and find your own shot, to go and try to combine because everybody's there. Bellingham is there, and Harry Kane is there, and Jack Grealish is talking to the inside, and Gomez is there as well, and Declan Rice is there as well. There is no space for Cole Palmer, and they never really looked to operate in wide areas, at least when Cole Palmer and Jack Grealish were on the field, and they never really looked to threaten in, in behind. There was one sequence around the 57th minute or so where they actually... Through Cole Palmer, they spring Kyle Walker open down the right-hand side in behind. And there's an opportunity to cross the ball. There are attackers inside the 18-yard box, and he did the uh, Manchester City move of, no, I'm not crossing it. I'm spinning out, and now we're passing the ball and ended up back to Dean Henderson again. That has to be really frustrating for attacking players, including Cole Palmer. And so he has struggled in finding his space in this team, in this structure. Is this a confusing time overall, Gab, for these England players? Because they don't know what the continuity is looking like in terms of the coach, and obviously we'll get on to that. But is this a bit of a difficult time for them playing for England? I mean, look, as far as the England players who play for the top clubs, uh, it's always, which is the vast majority, it's always confusing, right? Because you have a congested schedule. You have this uncertainty over Carsley. Now, Carsley, obviously, he was part of the setup before. He's somebody who 
you know, doesn't necessarily have the, the, the big name rep, but, uh, and, and unfortunately what often happens is people, you know, people assume that, you know, he's going to be like what he was like, uh, as a player where, you know, he, he kind of played the way he looked with, with a shaven head and, and whatnot, but, you know, he's a very attack minded coach. He's a very progressive minded coach. I had the opportunity to talk to people who, who worked with him at, at Brentford and he's a sharp guy. Now, Without the resume in club football, can you go and manage a national team to success? I think you can if it's the right guy. But equally, the messaging has got to be right with the players. And it's and it's really, really difficult because, you know, if you go back to club football and, you know, you've got Pep Guardiola telling you things or, or Carlo Ancelotti telling you things and then you show up with England and it's Lee Carsley, you know, often it's not going to carry, it's not going to have the same effect. It's it, it, it's not because the, the, the players are mean or selfish or, or disrespectful. It just doesn't work that way. So he's got to kind of earn it on, earn, earn it on the pitch, on, on the training pitch with them, while at the same time convincing his bosses that he is a viable uh, England manager, while at the same time getting results. So in that sense, it is a complicated time. Now, you're not going to cry for England because they have so much talent and so many options, but I think we have to recognize that uh, yeah, it, it is going to be a little bit confusing and, and difficult for the players. Talk about confusing. Let me give you some of the messages that we're getting from Lee Carsley at the moment, because there's a report out there in England from The Telegraph that he has not applied for the full-time England job and says he's happy with his work with the under-21s. And then we've heard after this game here him saying that England need a world-class coach who's won trophies, but he's not ruling himself out of the job. <laughs> what? So what, what's the message we can take from this here? <laughs> well, I guess he thinks that the under 21 euro title means something to him. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what Carsley thinks. It's about what the FA think. Now, if the FA are looking for reasons to give Carsley this job, then they will go, well, we're from home, we scored three goals. But if they are actually thinking, right, what has he done on the field when we watch his England team? I don't think so far you can say that he should get the job. And again, yes, he scored three goals away from home in international football, tick the box. Unfortunately, though, you're playing Finland. You got relegated into the second tier of international football. And the fact that they dominated possession and still gave away so many opportunities to the Finns would suggest that there's a problem defensively as there was the last time out when they lost 2-1 to, to Greece. So if the FA are looking for reasons to keep Carsley, then they'll look at three goals away from home and say, OK, rubber stamp. But if they really want to look in football terms, you can't give a team like Finland the opportunities that they did in this game, particularly how dominant they were on the ball. All right, we're going to take a look at some of the names that are in the running when it comes to the odds makers for the next England coach. Thomas Tuchel right up there at the top, followed by Lee Carsley. Pep Pep Guardiola, <laughs> five to one. Graham Potter and Eddie Howe. But has losing to Greece ruled Carsley out anyway, Gab? I don't think so. I mean, not if, if the FA are going to be grown-ups about this. Um, they saw the lineup he put out against Greece and, and he tried something different. Um, you know, Bellingham plus Foden plus, plus Palmer. Um, <clears throat> and it blew up in his face really, really badly. Uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. It's an embarrassing situation to be in. Uh, does it mean that you wipe away all the work that he's done in which the FA should be very familiar with, with an under 21 level? Um, no, I, I, I don't think it should. I don't think you take that into account. Now, obviously, if he has a couple more slip-ups, um, then th then you hold it against him. But, you know, looking at this other list of names, I think the FA are always very conscious of what happens when they bring in a big-name coach where the coach's personality is so big and then some sort of weird psychodrama ensues, right? We've been here before with, with Fabio Capello. We've been, been here before with Sven Joran Eriksson. I think they're very, very mindful of that. And if, you know, they're going to appoint somebody like Tuchel, then while Tuchel's a fantastic coach, that is very much a risk. Uh, if they turn back to an English coach, which I think, I think there's, and there's many people who, who would do that for pride, then it's relatively slim pickings because people can say, oh, isn't Eddie Howe wonderful? 
And then, you know, he draws a game at home, and then all of a sudden, they don't like Eddie Howe again. So I think that is kind of the fine line that they're walking. But for me, Carsley should still be in the running. My understanding is he is definitely in the running. Um, he might want to communicate a little bit le- better because also against Greece, you know, he said, no, this wasn't an experiment when it clearly was an experiment when you play a lineup that you've never played before. Uh, and of course, the same nonsense is like, oh, I haven't applied, but I'm not ruling myself out. You know, I haven't applied for the England job either, but I can say I, I am ruling myself out of the England manager job. It's interesting with the Lee Carsley situation because Gab's just laid it all out there, how selective the FA are when it comes to appointing a coach. With that in mind, he could have seen this as easy pickings, really, for himself. All I've got to do is get results and it's going to be me. Are you surprised that he experimented the way he did against Greece, with that being the case? Uh, well, the short answer is yes, if, if all the things that you're saying are correct. If... if if, if indeed we're as simple as if we beat Greece at home and we go and beat Finland away from home and I keep the job and I'm the England national team coach, then, well, I'm sure that he would have presented a lineup that he thought would give him the best chance to beat Greece. But you still should beat Greece at home, regardless whether you're experimenting or not. Uh, and he, we think of England, and, and I think we should think of England, as among the top tier teams in the world and early favorites to win the World Cup or at the very least be in the latter stages of the competition because this is what they be building up to. This is what they have done coming up to this competition. So we have these expectations, whether they're realistic or unrealistic, of, of what this national team should be. And it's not less than a shock to, to all of a sudden watch them lose in the manner in which they did against Greece and being kicked around all over the field by Greece and Greece winning at Wembley, deserving to win the match. And so that's, that's a shock to the system. And so if I'm making a decision here, if I'm part of the, of the federation, I'm thinking, yeah, I don't know if, whether this was an experiment or not. And if it was an experiment, it didn't work. And I didn't like it. I, I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like what that team looked like. I didn't like what that team looked like against Finland either. It wasn't all that convincing. If you're making the case for yourself, I don't think that Lee Carsley has made the strongest case he could have made. What are you pulling faces for? Well, because my, my problem is not with Lee Carsley, the, the game against Greece, because I think he did what most of us were crying for. You know, try and, try and get all these players in the team. Let's see what happens. Well, we saw what happened, and we clearly know now that it doesn't work. I was interested in what would happen against Finland. And I think the problems that they had against Greece, they had the very same problems against Finland. And we're just fortunate that going forward, the Finns didn't have the ability or the quality to take, a, to take the chances that came their way. So I've got more of a problem with the performance against Finland than I do against Greece because he did what we all wanted him to do and it was an experiment and it didn't work and that's fine, so then you ditch it. But to have the same problems in this game as you did in the Greece game, to, to, to do exactly what you did previously, that's where I have the problem with Carsley. Well, I think we can agree though, Stevie, whatever you may think of the Greece game or the Finland game, that if indeed this was a PowerPoint presentation where he's presenting his case to be the national team manager from here on out, it wasn't a very convincing presentation. You didn't come out of this match just thinking, that's our guy. Mm. Uh, there are more questions than answers. Uh, could Thomas Tuchel be a serious option, though, for the FA with everything that you've just said then, Gab? We obviously see him top of the list there with the odds makers and we are seeing reports that he could be coming in. We're also seeing some other reports that there might be more to this than meets the eye and it could be an attempt to put pressure on Manchester United to snap him off. What are you hearing? Look, Tuchel, Thomas Tuchel is raring to get back into, into high level club football. I mean, if you look at uh, sort of what, you know, A-list managers are out there and are currently unemployed, it's, it's a short list. and. No disrespect, and you know, other than the ones like Klopp who are sort of unemployed by choice and now are going back into employment, right? Um, I think from Tuchel's perspective, the way he likes to work, the way he wants to work, 
I think certainly the Manchester United job would be a lot more attractive to him um, than the England job because Tuchel is the guy who, he's a workaholic. He wants to be on the training pitch every single day. He wants to um, shape the players, shape the squad in ways that an England manager, an international manager, you know, frankly could never do. I think also Tuchel's seen what England managers have been to, been through, especially foreign ones in terms of the media and, and whatnot. Uh, and I think he's more comfortable in club management. Now, obviously, Manchester United, massive job, but, you know, this is an ambitious guy, and I don't think it, it hurts at all seeing his name linked to the England job. But but equally, I think, you know, the FA have been pretty clear. They, they, they said they're going to take the time with the appointment. The World Cup isn't until 2026. If it means, you know, another few months of, of Carsley and then maybe give Carsley, they're not going to be rushed into an appointment. So I think they're going into this eyes wide open. But yeah, if you were to ask me um, if Tuchel could pick between the two jobs, if and when the United job becomes uh, available, I, there's no question in my mind that he would choose Manchester United. Obviously, elsewhere in the group, we did see Greece take on Ireland today. The Greece that beat England last time out under that experimental line.